Busy Point Planning Commission meeting. I will call the meeting to order and ask for approval of the November minutes. I make a motion to approve the minutes. Have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion of those minutes? Roger. On the last page, I don't know if the wording's right. It says Commissioner Tice asked for, isn't the wording backwards or the percentage, Jerry? Isn't it supposed to be 50, 25 the other way around? Asked about the 50% coverage to change from 25% it should be, right? It should matter. be 50. Should be 50. Change from 50, it's changing from it, 25 to 50. It, it should be 50 to 25. Right. And then the next line down should be 50. Also. Right. Okay. That's it. So, Roger, you're uh, proposing a change to that? Suppose, yeah. Okay. Did you accept that in your motion to approve, Marcy? Yes. And Lee, your second? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion of the minutes? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed aye. the same? Motion passed. Council liaison report. Councilman Lillehei. Um, City Council met. Uh, we had a, a, a long discussion on uh, the budget process. We got input from several uh, uh, property owners uh, regarding uh, taxes and that. Um, and the bottom line was we did pass the uh, budget uh, as, as it was uh, proposed, um, which is about a 4% increase, was it? 10% 10. 10 increase. Um, and kind of the the biggest uh, issues that came up had to do with the increase in taxes uh, however it was primarily due to the increase in property values uh, which is which was rather relatively significant a couple years ago and it's going to be even more significant you know for the properties that come up next year um, but other than that uh, it was that was, that was basically the bulk of uh, everything that went on. So. Any questions? No. Thank you, Tom. We will then go to uh, open forum number one. This is an opportunity for anyone to come up and speak if they would like to. I would just ask if you would approach the podium and introduce yourself. Tell us where you live. Good evening. Merry Christmas to you Merry all. Merry Christmas. Gary Bakken, 29464 Shoreview Lane. And I am in here in support of the variance. Uh, I've talked with all but two on the perimeter, or the cul-de-sac, if you will. They're all in favor, of, and the other two I've been able to get a hold of. I have nothing further to say. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, we'll close open forum number one. We'll have an opportunity for open forum number two a little later in the agenda. Uh, the next item, Marcy will be joining the audience. She'll recuse herself uh, from this issue. And we have a public hearing to consider a variance application uh, from Marcy Weaver and Keith Schranke. Did I pronounce that correctly? Close, Schwankel. Schwankel. I think you went to school with my stepson. <laughs> yeah, I, I recognize the last name. Um, we will consider a variance application uh, and 
I will open the public hearing for this application and ask the applicant uh, if they would like to make a presentation. My name is Marcy Weaver and my husband Keith Schwankel. We live at 29452 Shoreview Lane in Breezy Point. Uh, we recently purchased the property in October, although we've actually been residents of Breezy Point and actually in Shoreview Lane for the past 22 years. And the reason we're here today is we're requesting a variance. Um, in short, the variance is to build a new garage replacing the existing garage. So if you're looking at the diagram, uh, essentially there is a garage there to date. Uh, we would be removing that garage. We'd be removing a 67, 68 square foot deck that currently is between the garage and the house, along with cement sidewalk that is currently between the house and the garage. So we'd eliminate the deck um, and also eliminate the garage to rebuild the single stall as a two stall garage, um, which is essentially adding on 517 square feet onto the garage. And so we would be removing 517 square feet by removing the uh, impervious driveway, which is currently concrete, along with some walkway. So from an impervious coverage standpoint, we're swapping 517 square feet um, between the two. And we're also eliminating an additional 68 square foot deck. Um, so it does reduce impervious coverage a little bit, um, basically from 32.8% to 32.2%. Uh, but one of the major benefits, in addition to being able for us to expand the garage, is the fact that by doing this and pushing it back from its current location and attaching it to the home, we're able to improve the setback. So in the R2 district, it's required um, to have 30 feet back from the road, and it's currently where the garage is placed is only 20 feet. So by moving it back, we're able to meet that setback. In addition, we can become better neighbors because the current garage is basically over the current setback line. And so we would be able to move it back towards the house and remove it so that it's not so close to that edge. There's still about seven square feet that would be within that boundary, but the bulk, which is about 196, 97 square feet that currently is over, um, we'd be able to improve that dramatically. So the, that's the biggest change there. Um, with the drive, we're removing concrete. So we're putting down pervious coverage, which is consistent with pervious coverage that's used in the neighborhood and other driveways, as well in Breezy Point. So um, we'd be able to keep that water flowing um, and, having, and not creating a runoff issue. Um, there is decking around the home uh, that is wood decking, which has slats in between there that does allow additional runoff, even though it's considered part of the impervious coverage. Um, I think there's some benefit to the fact that it is a wood deck with slots in between. Uh, it's not concrete or something like that that wouldn't allow additional water flowing. Um, as our neighbor Gary Bakken just uh, mentioned, we've also talked to the neighbors one, to find out if there's any issues or concerns that they had. None were expressed. Um, we asked them about water coverage runoff. No current issues were expressed. And I can also say from being in that neighborhood for 22 years and, and going down in that area, I've never noticed any water pooling in that area um, on, the, on the main roadway. Um, there are other areas on Shoreview that have issues, but this simply just hasn't had one. So another um, thing to bring up is with the variance process, one of the concerns or, or reasons for having a variance is practical difficulty. And when you look at our lot, two things stand out. Um, one is in the R2 district, uh, our lot size is 15,000 square feet. Our lot size is only 10,617. So we have a smaller lot to begin with. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're, we're trying to stay within setbacks and be cognizant of that fact. But because of the pie-shaped 
uh, aspect of the lot, it narrows considerably down towards the road, which makes it difficult to be able to, you know, take the current garage and do any expansion there. So uh, to solve some of the setback issues and with the unique kind of structure of the layout of that lot, we decided to push that garage back, which improves a couple things, because right now there isn't much for parking. If we have deliveries or guests, uh, they would end up parking on the road, which would impede traffic. And that's what the previous neighbors had as issues. Uh, when they had guests up, people parked all along the road there. And uh, you'll see that in the summer, there's a lot of people that will park there due to limited parking spaces. So we'd like to eliminate that. Or parking in the front yard where I'm currently parked. Can't make use of a small garage with a small driveway without uh, me being parked off in the front yard. Yeah. And so um, we want to keep that traffic flow uh, in the neighborhood and have it be aesthetically as pleasing as possible. So one of the individuals that's here with us today is Dan Worley. He's the architect uh, on this project, and he's one of the leading architects in our area. So he'll come up and speak as well, so he can give you more specifics on the actual you know, dimensions and how it's looking and how the architecture is going to play into that neighborhood aspect. But we do think it's going to improve the look and feel uh, that's, that's currently there and actually enhance it. So any other, did I miss anything, Keith? You see why she's speaking, not me. <laughs> <laughs> any questions? Yeah, that you any have questions? Me? of? So yeah. the deck in the lakeside is going to stay as a deck, right? Yes. And I agree, I always think decks let water through better than pavers. Yep. I, you know, you have cracks and so forth. And then the pervious driveway is going to be like a pavement type, or? It'd be a pervious asphalt. Oh, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. similar to what the city has used on the street. Yeah. Similar to what a few other neighbors in that neighborhood have used. Yeah. yeah. So I'm totally confused on that stuff, how it works, but okay. I know. <laughs> Lee, any questions? On the side of the garage, is that like a, like a deck walkway? Where it's kind of? Grids there or no? Uh, that would be a future um, pervious, pervious, pervious paver sidewalk. Oh. Any questions, Tom? Um, no, I've you know been to the property you know a couple times, a couple three times. Um, this is kind of the poster child for uh, practical difficulties because of the lot size and shape and stuff like that. Um, and I, you know, my own opinion is that uh, I think what they're doing is actually very good. It, it's, it's eliminating some problems. It still has some problems because that's, they can't do any better than what they're doing right now. So it's kind of, like I say, it's kind of the poster child of uh, where a uh, variance is required. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. you bet. Yeah, you I'm Dan Worley, 33816 County Road 3. Uh, you probably know our REM World building, but we're rebranded to Live For just recently, so that's why it's a, a different name. Um, I do this every day, and she did a better job than I do, so that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, I'll just recap the, you know, when I get involved in these projects, which I do frequently, it's always, a, for me, a common sense approach. Does it make sense mm -hmm. to the community? Because I live in the community too. So our approach was improve the street setback, improve the side yard setback, improve the impervious coverage, and that's the approach we took, and that's, that's why we're standing up here. If you have questions on the architecture, I'm happy to give comment, but I don't know that you do. Any questions at this point, Roger? Lee, Tom? Yes, Thank, you. Thank you. Staff review. Jerry, would you go through your staff review for us? Uh, again, the variance request is 2021006. The applicant is Marcy Weaver and Keith Schwankel. Address 29452 Shoreview Lane. Uh, the legal description is lots 85, 86, the 17th edition to Breezy Point Estates. Uh, 
property identification number is 102-10788. The zoning of the property is R2 Seward. The property, the, the original dwelling was constructed in 1981. A detached garage with a variance was also constructed in 1981. In addition to the dwelling was constructed in 1988 and the dwelling detached garage and impervious coverage, sidewalks, driveways, and decks currently occupies about 32.8%. The lot is a pie-shaped lot, 10,617 square feet. The elevation of the lot is relatively flat, and the access to the lot is off of Shoreview Lane, cul-de-sac, served by municipal sewer. Um, we've had, we have, uh, indications in the property file the year that the, the house and the garage and, and the addition were built. We find no evidence of when the, the decking or any of that stuff was done. Uh, the owner is seeking approval to remove the existing detached garage, deck and sidewalk, construct an attached garage, widen the driveway, pave the driveway with impervious material, and the proposed addition is within the building envelope, except for the corner, I think it's the northeast corner of the, the garage, has about approximately seven uh, square feet plus or minus that is uh, sticking outside of the building envelope. I think they've also designed the, the, the uh, southeast corner to uh, not have that problem with by uh, cutting out a portion of the corner of the garage or the proposed garage. Um, the area is currently zoned R2. Uh, the R2 district has the following zoning ordinance requirements. Lot area, 15,000 square feet. Road setback, right away setback, 30 feet. OHW setback, 50 feet. Impervious coverage, 25%. Building height 25 feet. Uh, the definition of the variance is a legally permitted deviation is provided by MS 462.357, as it may be amended from time to time from the provisions of this chapter as deemed necessary by the Board of Adjustment when strict interpretation of the ordinance would create practical difficulty and be impractical because of circumstances relating to lot size, shape, topography or other characteristics of the property, and when the deviation from the ordinance with any attached conditions will still be in keeping with the spirit of the intent of the ordinance, and variances cannot create a land use not permitted in the zone. Uh, variances shall be decided within a reasonable time with consideration for the following. The strict interpretation of the ordinance would be impractical because of circumstances relating to lot size, shape, topography, or other characteristics of the property not created by the landowner. The deviation from the ordinance with an attached conditions will still be in keeping with the spirit and the intent of the ordinance. The land use created by the variance is permitted in the zoning district where the property is located. The variance will not alter the essential character of the locality and the variance is not for economic reasons alone, but reasonable use of the property does not exist under the ordinance. Findings. The applicant contends that the practical difficulty is the pie-shaped lot, which narrows towards the cul-de-sac, limiting the building envelope. The applicant is proposing to utilize pervious materials for the driveway, and the use is consistent with the character of the surrounding neighborhoods. Proper permitting was not obtained for the deck. We don't have any evidence of any permitting of the deck. The following may be used in support denial of the variance request. The Planning Commission Board of Adjustment finds no practical difficulty. Reasonable use of the property exists under current conditions. The following findings of facts may be used to support approval of the variance request. The property is served by municipal sewer. The property is part of a 1964 plat which precedes subdivision regulations. The lot is irregular in shape with limited building envelope. Proposed garage is almost totally within the building envelope. By utilizing variance process, an opportunity exists to reduce impervious coverage and improve quality of runoff into the lake. 
uh, following our potential actions that the Planning Commission Board of Adjustments could choose to enact. They could choose to deny the request. They could choose to approve the request. Uh, the request is for a side yard setback of 8.2 feet on the northeast corner. And they could stipulate impervious coverage reduction from the proposed 32.2% or 32.2% could be uh, stipulated also. Uh, the following could be considered as conditions of the variance approval. All runoff from the property directed, to be directed to green gardens prior to release to the lake. Reduce impervious coverage to 25% by reconstruction of decks and sidewalks to pervious standards. Thank you, Jerry. Is there any public input? You mean folks in the, in the come up again? If you would, if you would like, you did a good job the first time, but nope, you could do it. Even shorter. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Baca to get two nine four six four Shoreview Lane. It's it's a it's a improvement all capitals and I'm all for it and also I would say a job well done by Marcy. Thank you Gary. Any other public input? Any further questions of the applicant? Oh, yes, sure. Sorry. We, we did dig into the deck permitting situation the best we could, and the best we can tell, they didn't require deck permits at the time that the decks were built. So in theory, everything that's there was permitted at the time it was built, okay. and we're just trying to improve that. I will then close the public hearing uh, on this request and move to our next agenda item, which is to take official action on this request. Uh, I would entertain a motion if someone is ready. I'll make a motion to approve V21-006 with the side setback of 8.2 with the impervious coverage not more than 32.2. We have a motion, we have a second. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? Lee, anything? No? Okay, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed the same? Motion passed. Congratulations. Welcome to the Columbus <laughs> <laughs> You going to rejoin us, Marcy? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Keith, did you did you graduate from Pequot? I did. Okay. There was eight of us, though. So. Pardon me. There was eight of us. I'm one of eight. Okay. Oh. I'll catch you afterwards to see which. <laughs> because I recognize you also. Anything else for the agenda? Jerry, anything else? Anything from anyone? Last meeting you left hanging the recommendation to city council on the R5 district. I was wondering about that also, any update, Jerry? Um, kind of batted that around in the office quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and I think we're going to wait till um, the folks get back for the summer. And we're actually, I'm thinking about holding a, like an open house where they could ask, just informally ask questions and answer. Okay. And before we do any recommendation to the council. Okay, so you've already held a public hearing on it. We've already held a public hearing. Okay, so we'll, we'll and you're not really do, changing anything. We're not really changing anything. You're just going to take some more public input. Yes. Okay. 
Any questions about that? Probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll uh, ask any if anyone would like to speak during open forum number two. If not, the meeting's adjourned. Now that's a record.